Uh, moving on with our agenda, we have the next speaker on the cards, that is Gurman Jodh Singh Randhawa. He is going to be talking about bridging the gap between React Native and Swift, uh, being a man uh, uh, having expertise with expertise in React Native and Swift. So, uh, Gurman Jodh, we would love to have you on screen now. There he is. Hello, a very good morning to you. Or is it afternoon? Or oh, we are already in the noon time. <laughs> How are things? How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. So as a short introduction for Gurman Jodh, he has been working with us at Kiki Ants as a software developer. He has almost 1.5 years of experience in React Native now. Yes. And uh, he also loves to watch football or play football or both. Both. I'm like both. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so which team do you support? That is something that I don't know. In Barcelona. Oh, he's a Barcelona fan. What 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 are you what do you think about the recent Messi news? Well, it's a little bit sad. Yeah, tough question. <laughs> tough question, yes. Anyway, uh, Gurman Jodh, I will leave the stage up to you and uh, take it away. All the best. Thanks. Okay. So, hello everyone. Uh, I hope you're all doing good today. My name is Gurman and I, I work as a software engineer at Geeky Ants. I have over one year experience in React Native and today we'll be discussing about bridging between React Native and Swift. So while writing React Native apps, we often find ourselves in need of a native functionality. So if React does not provide that by default, so what we do is we go to npm or search and search for a library to solve our issue. And thanks to our vast React Native community, we often find what we are looking for. Okay. But what happens if we don't find the correct solution or which fits our problem? So we'll have to write that code or that native code ourselves. So recently I was also in this kind of a situation. So I wanted to share my insights with you all. So let's just look at some of the basics. So the topic for today's discussion. What is a bridge? How to create native modules in Swift? And how to use these modules in React Native? Or how can you call these modules from React Native? So what is a bridge? Well, bridge is a concept which provides bi-directional communication between these two languages. And in our case, React and Native. So the main point to note is that a React Native bridge is asynchronous. So the only way to provide communication is through promises or events, or you can also use callbacks. So now we know that there's this thing called bridge. So let's see how does that work. So how do you create a native module in Swift? First of all, let's open Xcode and then we create a Swift file and then add it under your project name. And after you do that, Xcode will automatically ask you to create a bridging header. You can also create that yourself, but Xcode is doing the work for you. So and also we need to create an Objective-C file. But why is that? Like we are writing our code in Swift, but why do we need Objective-C file then? Well, the reason behind that is key React Native was made to talk to Objective-C. So what we have to do is there are two ways to send our code to JavaScript. We can either write in Objective-C and export it directly, or we can write it in Swift and then expose that code to Objective-C and then export it to JavaScript. So basically what you need to do is you need to create three files. First is your Swift file, second your bridging header, and third is an Objective-C. In your Swift file, you write your class or a knowledge method. In the bridging header, what you do is you import all the Objective-C headers that you want Swift to use. So the basic one is uh, RCT, RCT bridge module. So that module, uh, that header is responsible for letting your bridge know about your modules. Like it will register all your modules to the React Native bridge and an Objective-C file. We'll see it in a later that uh, the code which we write in Objective-C that is used to export your class and methods to React. So we'll be creating some Swift constants, Swift methods, first of all constants, then we'll implement promises 
and event emitters. So constants. So we'll use a method named as constants to export. Now what it does is it returns an array with a key value pair. And in this array, uh, you can mention all the constants that you want. When, and if you can see, there's an add rate objective C written in front of it. Now, as I mentioned previously, that you'll need to expose your Swift code or all your Swift classes and all its methods to Objective C first. So, for that reason, we annotate our method with Objective C so that it might it will behave as an Objective C type. Okay. And why do we use only this function, constants to export? We can also export using promises or even callbacks. But what is the use of this method, constants to export? Like uh, all these all these methods, all the constants which you will export using this, they will be available at runtime. Like if you have any static data that you want to be available at runtime, you you can export it using constants to export. And all the others like uh, in promises or even in events, they will be present. The you can avoid a, a round trip over the bridge. Like you'll have to first call it from React and then it will come to native and then go all the way back. So to avoid that, you can write it here as well. Okay. So this is a, just a simple promise function. What it does is it basically adds two numbers. So now you can see that there are three things here, like three columns. You can see in the parameter, there are three things. In the first column, you can see underscore second resolver and ejector. We'll skip that part for now. And uh, I'll explain why is that. These are basically called as parameter labels. Okay, we'll see it in the later slides while writing Objective C. Like, what is the function of that? Okay. Next, in the next column, we have one, two, resolve, reject. They are known as parameter names. And the uh, third column, we have a uh, parameter types. If you are familiar with TypeScript, uh, you would have. Uh, it's a little bit similar to that. So NS integer is basically a kind of integer as well. And RCT promise resolve and reject block they are provided by RCT bridge module only. Okay, so what we did here is we just perform any operation like it can do much. Uh, you can do any operation here. So once that is complete, based on the success level, uh, success or error, you send resolve or either reject the message or reject the function. So in resolve, you directly just resolve with the response. And if there is an error, you send the reject function. You, you basically reject that function. And you, it takes three parameters. First is an error code. Second is the error message. And third is an NS error object. You can either pass null. It's up to you. And we have annotated it with Objective C as well because we want React to use this. Mm. Next is an event emitter. Like, uh, how do you send events from native? and then listen to those events in React. So first of all, we'll have to import an RCT event emitter header. And now what that header does is it provides us with a method name as supported events. Now what this method does is it basically returns an array which has string values. And what are these string values? These string values are, are the events which React can listen to. Like all the events which you want to listen to should be mentioned in the supported events method. But how do you send those events? So basically, you just create a function. For example, I created one subtract. So what it does is it subtracts two values. And then to send an event, I'll use send event method with name and a body. Now, uh, while React, uh, while using it in React, we listen to a particular event. So that event will be the with name one. And the response which we want, it will be present in the body and same Objective-C right in front of it. Okay, so that is how we send events from native. Life cycle, OK. So uh, till now, what we did was we, we have written our code in Swift and then expose it to Objective-C. So now Objective-C uh, uh, can access all those functions and those methods and the class. So now, as I mentioned previously also, we will have to uh, export those modules through Objective C. Now we have to write some code in Objective C to export that module in React Native. Now, when I say that export or expose to React Native, it just means key registering your module or letting your bridge know that this module is present in your native. Okay, 
And how we do that is we use an RCT external module macro. It's provided by Objective C. So what it does is makes your bridge know that this module has to be transferred to JavaScript. Okay, and we'll see later how to use that. So now native modules has access to your modules, but how do you use it in your app? So you use it through native modules object. It's provided by React Native. So all the uh, native modules that you will uh, export from native, it will be present as a parameter, as a property, sorry, as a property to native modules. We will see that later, like how that works. Okay, so now this is the Objective-C file. Now we have written the Swift code and then we move on to our Objective-C file and we export that module. Now, how do you do that? As I mentioned, you use RCT external module. Now, what that does is it takes two arguments. The first is the name of your module, which you just created and its parent class, which is NS object. NS object is basically the parent class of most of the Objective-C files. So is that, and in React also, whenever you want to access that class, you'll have to use the same name, Swift module. Or if you want to change the name, you can use another macro. You can use RCT extern remap module. It takes it takes three arguments. First is the name that you want to use, uh, that you want to call it from. And second is basically your class name with which you implemented it. And third is its parent class. Okay, so, and also you just exporting the module won't give you access to all its functions. So you'll have to export its methods individually, like the, uh, like you can see here, I have exported them using R Objective-C provides us an RCT extern method macro. Now what that does is it exports all your method, it exports your method, which is uh, mentioned here. So the basic syntax of, uh, as you, if you remember, like I just told while um, mentioning promises, uh, there was a label, parameter label, which I said I'll explain later. So this is where the label comes in. So as you, uh, we had underscore there, huh? underscore second resolver and injector. They were the basic parameter labels. So as you can see, they're all mentioned here. So why is that? They provide basically, they provide mapping to your uh, Swift code. And I'll basically tell you the syntax of how this works. So first of all, we write the name of the function. Okay, and then after the name function, if it takes any parameters or arguments, for the first one, we only mention it types and its parameter name. We won't, we don't uh, mention its label. And that's why there was an underscore in the add function for the first label, because we are not providing any label. Okay. And yes, uh, that's it. Like we have the labels and then we have that uh, parameter types and then those parameter names. And same goes for subtract as well. We had underscore for the first parameter and then we have a parameter type, then parameter name. Uh, the syntax is basically the same. Okay. Okay. So now we have exported our module and all our methods to our bridge, but how do you access those from react native? So what we do is we use native modules subject, which is provided by react native and all our modules, which we exported, they will be available as properties. So as, as you can see here, we can access that as a property for Swift class. And if you want to listen to events, you'll have to create an instance of native event emitter of that module for which, uh, in which you, yeah, in which you are sending those events. So I'm sending the events in the same module. So that's why I mentioned the same Okay, but how do you listen to those, those events? Okay. So this is how you access the constants, which are, uh, which we provided in the constants to export method. Uh, okay. And next are promises. So promises you can access using async await, or if you want, you can use then or catch. It's up to you. Like we'll get a value five. If you add this, uh, two numbers, uh, you, it will return you with a, a resolve five next events. Like how do you send events? Like if you remember, like, uh, we sent an event in the subtract function. So what, what it will do is it will send an event with an event name as subtraction and in the body it will send value 15. So what we did here is we added an listener with the name of subtraction. So we're listening to subtraction event. And then as a response, we will get the 
value and what is this value this value is the one we mentioned in the body of the event which we were sending in native okay so this is basically how you access all the things that you did in your native code thank you so i'll be providing a github link for this uh, very shortly i'm adding few more functions for that so basically we'll see what happens mm -hmm. Selby, okay. Why, hi, Gurman. Hello. Thank you so much for all the informative uh, things you've told us. Although we have a question for you from the viewers. Okay. So, uh, Israr Sheikh asks, is it possible to keep our secret keys in Swift file and then export them using constant to export so that the keys will be more secure? Well, for security, if you want to use that, you should keep it in the environment variable only in React. If it's a static data, then why do you want to even write it there? Like if it, if you're using it from Swift or if it's provided in Swift only, then it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you should uh, mention write it there. It, it's better if you write it in environment variable only. I okay, hope that. Well, yeah. Well, I hope that answers this question too. Uh, so that is all the questions that we have for you at the moment. Uh, if there are any more, we'll probably get them to you towards the end of the session so that you can answer them for our viewers. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Gurman, thank you so much for your uh, time here. And we would love to have you towards the end of the session. So please yeah. stick around. And I'll see you again at the end. Yes, see you again. Bye. Thank you so much.